Humanity. We are going to explore the origin of the name human. Of course, humans are just human beings, like you and me. If you search its meaning on Google, you see the following. Human and humanity mean the same thing, but humanity is too deep. Humanity means the quality of being humane, benevolence. That means humanity is the fruits of the inner person. Humanity is what comes from their hearts as deeds, what makes them humans. Humanity is original human moral values, and it is a pure loving heart. Humanitarian people have this heart as they are interested in promoting other people's well-being. Their acts are kindness, goodness, generosity, and charity. It is tough to resist their love. Did you already meet a person like this one? We all feel attracted to them and mostly fall for their love, because they submit to our services with no cost, just because they care for us. Let's go a little bit deeper. Here are similar words. Humanity is similar to compassion, brotherly love, fellow feeling, kindness, consideration, understanding, sympathy, tolerance, goodness, gentleness, leniency, mercy, pity, tenderness, benevolence, charity, generosity, and magnanimity. Human and humanity mean the same in many languages. The word humanity is found in many languages, and it is related to the word human. English, human, then humanity is the quality of being humane, benevolence. In French philosophy it means, character of what is human, human nature. Let's translate it from French to English you will see what I've said. The second definition, it means, feeling of benevolence, of compassion towards others. Let's see in Portuguese. I will translate it into English and see what it means. Feeling of kindness, benevolence, etc. In Swahili. Kinyarwanda, Kosa, Zulu language, Karundi, humanity is Ubuntu. Ubuntu is the popular word that the Nobel Peace Prize Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu used to build unity in South Africa. Open Wikipedia website and type Ubuntu philosophy in the search box. Wikipedia explains Ubuntu in African languages as a belief in a universal bond of sharing that connects all humanity. It is in every Bantu language as you can see here. Angola Botswana Burundi Cameroon Congo and all African languages Ubuntu maxims or short statements Ubuntu means I am what I am because of who we all are. A person is a person through other people. I am because we are. Take your time and explore this website and see how Ubuntu build our unity. Especially here, Ubuntu diplomacy, education philosophy, Ubuntu morality, and here in popular culture. I am sure in your native language you will find a word related to the name human and its meaning is humanity. This shows me that this word Ubuntu or humanity is in all languages of the world. We've already seen also humanity meaning in most spoken languages in the world like English, French, and Portuguese. Let's go deeper again. There are many methods used to name someone or something, but the common ones are. 1. Naming things from their appearance. We name things according to their appearance and how they look. Many nicknames are given this way. We look at someone and call him how he looks. If they are short, we name them shorty, tall they are tall men, if they are white skin, we call them white people, or if they are black skin, we call them black people. Other many names are also given this way. A forklift truck got its name because it has two forks that lift things. There are many other examples, a bow, a mirror, gold color, etc. 2. Names from what things do. You also know that many things are named according to their purposes. To compute is to calculate, and that is where the computer gets its name. The computer monitor is used to monitor things. Many other examples include a pencil sharpener, eraser, teaspoon, cyclist, scientist, engineer, teacher, goalkeeper, etc. 3. 
owner's name or surname. For example, car manufacturers named their products or their companies this way. Toyota's owner name is Toyota, Mercedes and Benz are the names of entrepreneurs who invented this car, the owner of Ford factory is Henry Ford. Many family members get their father's surname. Many geographical areas, tribes, streets get the owner's name. The human name come from being humane, qualities of humanity describe what a human really is. Since naming something goes with what it does, or its look, the name human comes from humanity, because it means the same. A human should have these qualities of human as compassionate, kind, merciful. Does the human name come from the owner's name? The natural man is one with a heart that produces humanity, brotherly love, generosity, kindness, mercy, sympathy, fellow feeling, pity, goodness. In Genesis 1.26, Bible tells us that God created humans in his image and likeness. He created a man to reflect his glory. The word likeness means the quality of being alike, resemblance, according to Google. Let's see God's qualities. God is compassionate. God is merciful. God is kind. God is good. God is generous. God is loving God. These are only few verses I chose, there are many other verses that explain God's qualities in the Bible. Therefore, God created humans in His image and likeness, as He gave us the heart of humanity, precisely as He is. In addition, God's Spirit produces the same qualities of humanity, see Galatians 5 23 but the fruit of the spirits is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So he took his qualities and put them in the human heart. So, we got the name human from our Father in heaven, because he created us in his image and likeness. Remember he created languages, Genesis 11 7. That's why one thing has many names from different languages, but the meaning is the same. Like a father, like sons, when you have a child, you always want them to represent your values or hard work. Every parent will be proud to see their children imitating them. Like the way God wants us to reflect His glory. Cruelty, Inhumanity Let's go back to humanity definition we started with. There is opposite of humanity in the red fonts, cruelty and inhumanity. Unfortunately, that is what we have become. We lost our original moral values. Everyone fails or failed to love someone somewhere. We fail to be kind, compassionate, generous, merciful, pitiful, and tolerant to each other. Every human being on earth is guilt because everyone does wrong to another. Everybody lied. Everybody judged others. Most of us ignored to do good to the needy people. So everybody does wrong to others, and we all have enemies, or are enemies to others. In Romans 3.23, Bible says, We are all sinners because we fall short of the glory of God. After all, no one of us is still carrying the image and likeness of God. It has pure humanity like the original product that God made. We unconsciously and deliberately sin because sins are programmed in our culture and have become a habit. It is easy to be selfish because even our culture promotes selfishness and individualism. Did you see how difficult it is to break a habit? How did we lose our humanity? Bible is one of the oldest and famous books today. It tells us the history of humanity and how we are created in the image and likeness of God. God is also generous, good, kind, loving God is seen in his qualities, and this shows us that he naturally created us with the same qualities he has. Human nature was corrupted in Eden Garden. The cunning snake approached our first great parents and misled them, opening their eyes to show them that they can be like God. So they lifted up their hearts, like Satan did when he disobeyed God in Ezekiel 28 2. This snake is the same snake spoken in Revelation 12:9 who's a great dragon, devil and Satan, the deceiver of the world. So he is Satan. What the serpent did was to lift up their hearts and make them feel higher, on the same level of God. 
He told them they would be like God, but no one can be like God because he is more powerful than us in anything you know. However, you can reject him or your other superiors. Then nobody will be above you to guide you. You will immediately lift yourself and make yourself equal to him because you will be making your own decisions. When you are making a decision, you have to face good and evil and become your own superior, but the problem remains, you don't have the ability to be superior and manage yourself. Satan really wanted them to disobey and lift up their hearts and be their own gods, because he was targeting to separate them from the love of God. So he planted a self-centered spirit in their hearts, which separates people, and it is the same spirit that divides the society even now. Anything that exists has a system in it, which leads to its performance. A system is how elements of certain things perform together and share their performances towards the common results. When any element refuses to perform, maybe when it is broken, the whole system fails. A family also works when every member performs spiritually and physically as expected. Conversely, when one refuses to fit in the family order, the family fails. In the family, when a child lifts up his heart, he doesn't want to obey. He wants to be independent and make his own decisions. That will bring him consequences to leave the house, and that's when he starts to face evil while still vulnerable. Girls are vulnerable to any evil, human trafficking, prostitution, etc. Boys will be affected by drug users and other many kinds of evil. Before his rebellion, he only knew good as he lived with parents who take care of him. Do you remember the famous story of a prodigal son? Luke 15 11 to 32. An employee who lifts up their heart means their job is over. Disobedience doesn't work in any society. Sin disconnected them from God. Evil was already in their hearts. God saw they were approaching the tree of life where they could eat its fruits and live forever with evil. So, he sent them away. Love is to care for others, then those you are caring for, submit to you to make it easier to care for them. God loves humans, and they return respect and submission. Now, we disrespect him and submit to ourselves like our first great parents did. Someone who obey God, does what God wants because he wants us to love him, and love one another. Someone who loves, does humanitarian acts, and is the one carries God's image and likeness. If someone has no humanity, they are not carrying the image of God but of the devil. Since then, the human heart became self-centered. Everything from him is me and my self-centered heart, as we fail to love our neighbors, which becomes a great sin. Sin is failing to love others because to hate someone is the opposite of loving them, and you can only kill someone you don't love. Raping, stealing, envying, fighting, looting, cheating, adultery, fornication are all the absence of love because all these come from hating someone and are fueled by self-centeredness from haters' hearts. Sin damages life. Sin kills because sin aims to damage life of the sinner or the victim and their relatives. When someone kills a person, his life is gone. Maybe that person is a breadwinner, a father, a mother, a brother to someone. You also damage their lives because their hearts are broken, and you are taking away their provider. Maybe they will also revenge and take your life away, or you will be in prison for many years. Then, the same trauma take a place into your family as well. Sexual immorality is chasing own interests which are also self-centeredness. You don't really care about your partner except for your own interests. Unless you engage yourself and marry them, then you will be responsible and care about them. Sexual immorality is a sin against own body. It damages other people's lives, spouse's heart, and put their life in a mess. Sometimes, an unplanned child will be born, and most of these kids' lives are miserable, they grow up without the full attention of both parents, which triggers other evil in society. Can you see how sins have a terrible impact on people's lives? Jesus the Savior God creates using the word, which means that he speaks and things happen. Bible and Quran both proves this. In Genesis chapter 1 we see where God created things only by saying, Let this be, and there was. Listen carefully the following verse. John 1 1-17 says, 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe who believe in his name, who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Colossians 1 15-20 says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven, and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through peace through the blood of his cross. The Quran 345 The angel said, O Mary, God gives you good news of a word from him. His name is the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, well esteemed in this world, and the next, and one of the nearest. I am working in a trailer manufacturing company, which also has a repair department. When a trailer is damaged or an accident, they return it to us and repair it as we built it. If something is damaged, we remove it and replace it with the same quality material we used while building it. Just the same way you can repair your car when it breaks. Try to remember when your house is damaged. How do you repair it? Let me tell you how I understood this. One of our supervisors got liver cancer a few years back. My manager asked all of us to pray for him. I did not because I felt like I did not want to pray that time. After a few days, I thought about how sick he was and felt like urgency to pray for him at that moment. While praying, I heard a voice in my ears telling me, see how easily you repair defective trailer when a customer wants you to do it. How much easier it will be for the one who made the human body to repair that liver. I was astonished. Then, I gave him this message. Above verses, God created everything through the Word, Jesus Christ, who became flesh and dwelt among us with flesh like us. When we become corrupted, to repair our broken life, God goes back to His Word used during creation to fix the damaged life like we repair that accident trailer. We also go back to the design, get the same material with the same properties, and repair it. In the sight of God, we all look damaged and rusty in our hearts because of sin. No one can go back to Him if we are not repaired. God is recreating again, as He did in the beginning, He created through His Word, and now because He needs to fix the damages, He uses the same Word again to recreate or repair. So He sent the Word to the world to restore humanity. The Word of God, Jesus, has all the power to repair any damaged life and restore it as it was when God created it. Without Him, there is no life because the Word of God has life, since all were made through, all were made through Him. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in Him, and He in God. 1 John 4.15 Jesus Christ has life. Sins damage our lives, we look heartbroken, and we cannot return to God if we are not repaired. Therefore, we must first be fixed. Since sin came through disobedience, it is hard to fix us without surrendering and give up our disobedience. The first sin was disobedience, to fix it is to obey. People's problem, resisting God and resisting to be repaired. Everyone's life is damaged. We have no humanity anymore, but the opposite of humanity, cruelty, inhumanity, brutal, wicked, and all kinds of evil. 
We have become sexual immoral, idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals, thieves, the greedy, those habitually drunk, verbal abusers, swindlers. Take your time and sit back and observe what is happening in our society. We have become like animals fighting for self-interests from one another. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God provides the solution, we reject it. He gave us a cure, but many people are resisting. The reason why God sent Jesus to die for our sins, is that Jesus has life in him as all of us were created through him. He completely heals us, and we appear in front of God without any blemish or any corruption because he gives us a new life. To God, we will be like a brand new man he created before sin when Jesus' blood repairs us. By the end of this age, God will come and take us in his kingdom as he planned it before the foundation of the world. So if you are still corrupted, you will be removed from the earth as a broken part is removed from a car when the owner wants to repair it. The broken part is thrown away where it is not distracting others, like how tares are removed from wheat. All problems in the world were caused by us. Then other people come amplifying them or adding more problems. We are the ones that create this chaos, thinking that we are saving our own life, but messing up other people's life. Let's revise what we have seen. An original human who is not corrupt has humanity as he is compassionate, caring, generous, benevolent towards other people. He has sympathy, understanding, mercy, pity, he does charity. He was created to represent God's glory, but today, we see many of us already turned to the opposite with inhuman, cruel, brutal, barbaric behavior. Sin is traceable from Eden Garden when great parents disobeyed God and opened their hearts for the evil spirit of self-centeredness. When something is broken, you do not throw it away immediately, you first try to repair it. But when it is not reparable, you get rid of it. When humans are corrupt, God repaired them by showing them a sin when he gave commandments to restore love in the human heart. He even went so deep, offering his word, his beloved son, the source of life Jesus Christ, so whoever believes in him should have eternal life, and those who want to be repaired may be, may be repaired. Many people resisted him, but soon he is coming back to judge and remove evil. So those who are not willing to be repaired will go with the evil. God expects to see us with humanity, Ubuntu, generous, compassionate, kind people, good people, like he created us. So let's restore humanity. You remember Lazarus and Richmond's story? A rich man was judged because he had no humanity, he was not compassionate, kind or generous. He did not love his neighbor Lazarus. Jesus wants us to be good Samaritans. To love everyone who needs us like that. That's humanity. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. This is called humanity. So do you feel guilty of becoming inhuman? Are you scared that you will be judged? Do not worry. God provided the way to escape. He sent us his word, Jesus Christ, to heal us. So be honest to him, open your heart, let him restore humanity in it and live in it. Do you believe in this message? He who receives you receives me, and he me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. If you like this message, copy it or translate it into your language and share it with all people you know. Whatever rewards I will get for doing this, you will get the same rewards. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God.